Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Shauna Lynn Simon here, and she is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast, and she is an amazing coach. She does a whole bunch of things that she's going to tell you about today, and one of the things she's going to talk about is productivity and efficiency, and she has some great tools and strategies for productivity and efficiency. And today she has just a lot of tools and tips to share. So I'm really excited to have her on the show and, you know, Shauna, take it away. Thank you so much, Stacey. I'm so excited to be back here. I so love when we do these shows together Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, this is, this is definitely an episode that really pulls up my heartstrings here because it's just, it it really hits home for me as someone who has recovered from burnout. uh, the, The best way to prevent burning out again is ensuring that we're being productive and efficient And I've always been someone who really doesn't like to feel like my time is ever being wasted. So I like to make sure that I'm really maximizing every minute of the day, whether it's social or professional, really want to make sure I'm getting the most of it. So uh, I've spent a lot of time studying productivity, practicing productivity and finding efficiencies and Um, you know, there's a lot of great advice out there. I've done my best to try to summarize some of the things that I have found the most useful for me for not only helping us to be productive and efficient, but Mm -hmm. ensuring that at the the goal of that is to ensure that we have the mental well-being, the physical well-being, the the capacity to be able to take other challenges as they come up at us. There's nothing worse than when you feel completely overwhelmed and it feels like one more thing is just going to crush you. Yeah. And so it's one of the things that we'll talk about today as well is what to do if like something super unexpected comes up, how do you keep things from getting completely derailed? Right. And I'll tell a personal story about what happened to me for that. But the first thing that I really want to talk about uh, is what I call the productivity paradox. Mm-hmm. And this is essentially, I see so many people caught up in this. Yeah. Everyone is busy. We're busy, 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 busy. And we often hear people say, well, busy is good, right? Yeah. Busy is not good if you're not doing the right things. So if you feel like you are just super busy every day, but at the end of the day, you look up and you're like, I don't think I actually accomplished anything. That's what I call the productivity paradox, where you're just sort of spinning your wheels, Mm -hmm. doing all these different tasks. And the challenge is that we get so caught up in all the things that we need to do that we don't really stop to take a look at whether or not we should actually be doing those things. So the productivity paradox basically is where we feel super busy, but we're not necessarily accomplishing anything. We're not necessarily achieving anything. And I mean, we do this like with the best of intentions, of course, like we, we don't know how to say no to someone. Maybe that's one of the big things that gets us caught up where we've been asked to do something. And we're like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. And we talked about this on the last episode about how to, you know, kind of what can you control? What can you not control? And when someone asks you to do something that maybe you shouldn't be saying yes to, are you able to adjust the request to be able to satisfy their needs? What's the objective or outcome they're looking to achieve? And is there a way that we can say yes without having to completely compromise our own schedule, our own task list. Right. So finding ways to be able to accommodate them with uh, within our own boundaries. So that's that's yeah. a pretty huge thing. And that's often though where we get stuck in this productivity paradox, paradox where we're just like, we just don't have enough time for anything. Yeah. And no one ever likes to be told that you're too busy to do something for them or with yes. them, right? Like that uh-huh. just, that is the biggest we get a little bit offended almost by it. Like, what do you mean they're too busy for me? Like it's, it's almost as though we're categorizing people and ranking them at, in terms of level of importance. Yeah. And it's not about the person so much as it is the task. We should be ranking tasks in level of, uh, you know, on, on level of, of importance and urgency. Yeah. Um. So the biggest issue with this productivity paradox though, is aside from the part where you're not getting anything done, that's actually taking you closer to your goals and allowing you to move your business forward but it's going to lead to burnout because yeah. it's just, it's just not possible for us all to be super women. I, you know, yeah. like we got to take those capes off every now and then yeah. and just be realistic about what we can and cannot do. So my first bit of advice for everyone is just to not mistake busy for being productive. Yeah. Uh, so if we eliminate some of that busy work um, and really concentrate on that high level work that helps us to move our business forward, whether it's 
business goals, personal goals, whatever, yeah. we're going to find that if we are really laser focused on what's moving us towards our goals, yeah, that busy work just starts to fall away after a while. We're going to get more and more disciplined at how we evaluate those lists and yeah. a, a little bit more strict about what we're going to say yes to. And it allows us a greater capacity to make better informed decisions. And when our mind can relax a little bit and rest a little bit, we have the capacity to think of new ideas and to innovate more and to be able to give more. And that'll allow us to think of better ways to do things as opposed to just getting stuck in those mundane tasks. So, so we're going to talk about today is how to avoid getting into that productivity paradox with some, hopefully some time management and efficiency tips. And I believe I mentioned this on the last episode, uh, but in case anyone hasn't checked it out, I've got a fantastic free guide about how I gain an extra 10 hours every single week, my best tips for that. So if you go to about shaunalyn.com forward slash time, that will take you to that, uh, that PDF, um, which is a great guide. It's got some great tips in it, but we'll cover a little bit of it here today anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so the biggest thing that I would recommend when it comes to productivity is to identify when your most productive hours are. And for most people, those most productive hours are earlier in the day. That's when our mind is most at rest. It's most fresh. Your most productive hours might be maybe after lunch. Maybe you've, you've gone for a walk or something. So maybe that's your most productive time. But those are the times that you should be designating for working on your business. Right. So being able to do a little bit of time blocking is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's this is especially challenging, I think, as entrepreneurs. It's not as structured yeah. as a standard corporate nine to five type job is. Yeah. And so we find it's easy to be pulled into different directions. Yeah. But if we can protect some of our own time by blocking it off, turning off some notifications and really concentrating on things. I mean, if you're only going to spend three solid hours on working on your business in a week, you want to make sure those are three solid hours, right? Yeah. So, and even if that's just your planning time, maybe some small tasks can be kind of trickled around your schedule for the rest of the week, but yeah. Finding like what is your most productive day of the week? What's the most most productive hours? And doing your best to protect those. Um, I tend to find that I have a lot of meetings first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. and yet those are my most productive hours. So I'm working to restructure my time so that I I have certain days where I don't have any meetings in right. the morning. Which for the most part I do have. Now I have two days a week where I don't have any meetings in the morning, and I really protect those. It says in big bold letters in my calendar that my entire staff can see that it says no appointments, right? Like, don't even try to put anyone on my calendar for this time. I am not going to make an exception. Yes. And once in a blue moon, you've got to make an exception, but you've got to really evaluate whether or not it's, it's valuable and worth it for you to make that exception for you to move those items right. when you've got something this strict in your calendar. So, um, so I didn't generally say, you know, put the tasks that are most important mm -hmm. or, <laughs> <laughs> this one's key as well. The tasks you really don't want to do. Like as entrepreneurs, we're often doing a lot of things that honestly, we're not that great at, Yeah. but it's sort of the nature of the beast. Like I personally hate accounting. Mm -hmm. I do have a bookkeeper and I do have a CPA. Like I've got the people that do the things they need to do, right. but I still got to do some money management, bookkeeping stuff myself. Yeah. And I absolutely despise it. Yeah. So if I saved it for the end of the day, it's going to keep getting pushed to the next day, to the next day, to the next day. So I put it at the start of my day and I clear it off and I feel so much more productive. A, yeah. like a weight's been lifted. It's mm -hmm. out of my head. It's not weighing on my brain anymore. So it allows me to take on the next task yeah. with a much lighter air, which I which I think is huge, but yeah. I know it sucks. Like, yeah, we don't want to give up our time to do those tasks. That <laughs> but you know, that does help though. Yeah, it definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I recommend though is during these uh, most productive times, especially, but even throughout the day is just restricting distractions. So planning yeah. for that focus time. I think we struggle with this, but yeah, uh, they've done studies on it that I believe the number, and don't quote me on this, this is not an official citation or anything, but I believe mm -hmm. the number is something like when you get pulled away from a task and try to get back into it, it's about 20 minutes that it takes to properly get refocused. Oh, That's huge. It. Yeah. Like imagine doing that six times a day. Oh my God. You just yeah. lost two hours of time. Like exactly. that's a lot. Right. So, uh, I am a 
big fan of turning off my notifications for a period of time for anyone who's getting heart palpitations, just thinking about this, <laughs> you can, there's a lot of different settings. So let's say you're like, I can't turn off my notifications. What if my kids need to get a hold of me? Right. Okay. If that's really a concern, you can set your notifications so that certain people can get through. Right. And maybe you have it set to a certain way. So I think I've got my phone set to this. I believe this is an iPhone feature where if someone calls me and they get my do not disturb, if they hang up and call me back right away, that'll come through that second phone call, because it's a trigger saying this must be an emergency. Right. If they're calling back a second time. So you can set up some, you know, little gateways to get through, uh, but yeah. it allows you to not get distracted by every little ping notification, whatever that comes through. Um, if you're really, really still not comfortable with completely putting yourself on do not disturb, just put your phone on silent. So at least like it's up to you when you want to check for the notifications as yeah. opposed to the sound of a notification drawing your attention away. Right. Um, I actually haven't had my phone make any noise since I got my Apple watch years ago. So I still get the vibration. Don't get me wrong. Like there's still, there's notifications that come through. <laughs> but that was game changing for me of just like, I, it, it doesn't distract me quite the same way. Yeah. So, so that's pretty huge. Um, I know, I think we talked about it a little bit on the, the last episode as well about the Pomodoro method where you might work for 20 minutes and then take a five minute break and doing that on and off. That is different than a disruption because it's a planned break as opposed to a disruption. But that right. allows you, if you know I'm dedicating the next 20, 25 minutes to what they call flow, that allows you to get into that deep state of just focusing and knowing you've got that alarm that's going to go off and tell you when it's time to take a break and then get back into things, but you're not taking a big enough break that you completely forget what's going on. So, um, and then the other part of that further to that is also just your communications that come in. If you're really scared, well, people are going to be trying to get a, in touch with me. There's a lot of things you can put in place for that. One of the biggest things that I always recommend is just an auto responder on your email that yeah. tells people, you're not going to be checking your emails 24 seven, right? And you can maybe give them an emergency way to communicate with you if you really want to. But even that, I mean, I honestly find that just batching my responses to yeah. all messages throughout the day. And I've trained even people in my personal life. They know that if they text me, they're probably not getting a response for a few hours. If they do, right. it's because they happen to text me during a time that I am checking messages, Yeah, but I'm not on it constantly. Like the number of messages we get in a day. Oh my gosh. And it's crazy. Oh, oh it's my crippling. gosh. Like it's like, there's no way we can actually be expected to keep up with that type of communication. Yeah. They said that the average person spends just under two hours per day responding to just emails alone. Yeah. I believe it. Two hours. Mm -hmm. You know what I could do with two hours in my day? Exactly. I, yeah. I believe it because when I go through my morning emails, it, it takes a long time. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours. Sometimes, you know, I'm bombarded with emails and you have to get back to some of these people. And it's like, you know, it takes time. And then you look at the clock. Yeah. Oh my God, where did this time go? When, especially if you're in a decision-making position, which you are, of course, you're running your business. So some of the times when these emails are coming in, you're being asked to say yes or no to something or decide between two options of something. Right. And so it's not a small, just respond to the email, ask yeah. a question. I already know the answer respond. Some emails sure are like that. They're just quick and easy. There's other times where it's like, Oh, let me look this up. Oh, let me think about this. Oh, well that causes five other questions to come up. So it's yeah. not a simple answer, you know, exactly. uh, or you get those emails that have like 10 questions in them where you're like yeah. in line in another color, then they're in line, in another color, like those ones, when I see the response come through, I'm like, oh, I thought I got you off my plate, but okay, yeah. here you are. Like it's just a boomerang <laughs> effect sometimes, you know? So, yeah. So I feel like setting up that autoresponder uh, really helps to give peace of mind where you don't feel that anxiety if they're expecting an immediate response from me. You've set yeah. the expectations. So that autoresponder can say a variety of things. So let's say, for example, I work with a lot of home staging clients. So mm -hmm. they're out on a staging project. Yeah. That staging project can take four hours or it can take eight hours if they're checking their phone every few minutes, right? Exactly. So you, you want to be as efficient as you can on that project. You've got staff with you. You don't want to be paying them for extra hours because you've been slowed down by your phone. Yeah. So just putting in a little auto, auto responder that just says, I'm on a large project today. Uh, I will be out of pocket until three o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. I will do my best to respond to any urgent emails at that time. All the other emails will be responded to tomorrow morning. Right. Right. Set those expectations. If you have someone in your office, you can redirect people to. That's been a game changer for me. My inbox is getting less and less 
because I now have, if you would like to do this or this, contact so-and-so in my office for right. booking design consultations, Book so talk to so-and-so for booking me for speaking, talk to so-and-so. Like these are not things that need to come directly through me. Yeah. Um, so that helps to weed people out as well. Uh, it helps just take some of that pressure off of feeling like we just need to be so attached to all the things. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I, I find that some people, some people have a hard time detaching because, yeah. you know, really as an entrepreneur, you have to learn to put the responsibilities of certain things on other people and take a step back because a lot yeah. of people feel like it's, it's their baby because they created it. And they have a hard time detaching a little bit. But then, like we mentioned, you can't do it all. Because if you, you do, it do it all, all. you're going to hit burnout. And you're going to really, it, it's you're not going to succeed. Your, your focus, mm -hmm. your clarity, making good decisions, you know, and having the energy to actually be able to get to the point that you want to get to, you know, it, it's just not going to be there. Because you can't do it all, just like you said. Yeah. And you bring up a really good point about just being able to make good decisions. That is where your highest value is oftentimes as a business owner is making some of those high level decisions that are yeah. those strategic decisions that are going to really direct the overall trajectory of your business. And so thinking about what decisions should you be making and what decisions are other people more than capable of making. Yeah, And so delegating, I want to talk about that for a moment because uh, most of us delegate wrong. And yeah. honestly, we're terrible at it. We delegate in a boomerang effect, <laughs> right? Yeah. You go do these three things and then you bring them back to me and I'll review them mm -hmm. and then I'll finish things off. No, no. You got to get, you got to be able to allow someone else to own the outcome yeah. of, of, of a project. And uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Mike Michalowicz. I think we might've talked about him previously. He, yeah. He's written Profit First. Um, fix this next. Another book that he has is fantastic. It's called Clockwork. And he talks about the power of delegation and being able to do it properly that like they've got to be able to own the task, start to finish. Now, in order for them to be able to do this effectively, yeah. you need to give them the tools that they need to be successful. They need yeah. to understand any information that you have that's valuable to them completing the task, they need to have it. Any access they need so that they need to be able to like log into certain accounts, you've got to be able to give them that access. Yes. But one of the most important things is they need to understand what you're trying to achieve by that. Right. And that gives them the flexibility to maybe approach it in a slightly different way. Yeah. I uh, I have a Bachelor of Mathematics degree. So I studied uh, uh, math in university and yeah. it's super exciting, super exciting field. Uh, but what was really cool I was talking about this actually just recently. Uh, what's, what was really cool about math, what I really enjoyed about it is that there was a finite answer. It's not subjective. The answer is finite. However, the path to getting to that answer can take yeah. different routes depending right. on who's completing that question. So there was an exam that I was completing one time and uh, there was, I got to this one question. I had no idea how to complete the question, mm -hmm. but like most math problems, I could break it down into individual parts. And I knew the theorems for each of those individual aspects. Yeah. So normally this, I think this should have taken about a page to two pages to complete. And right. I want to say I took like three or four pages to complete it. Cause I just basically took all those individual things. I took what I did know yeah. and threw it all at this. And it was a completely twisted route to the point where like my, my professor actually said he had to go to two other professors to get them to check the work. He's like, you got the right answer, but your path to getting there is not what I would have ever taught. Yeah. So he had to take it to two other profs to just like double check. Like, can you just make sure that she actually did this right? And I did. And this is the thing is that you might delegate something to a staff member and their path to getting to that outcome might've been completely different from what you would have done, yes. but it doesn't make it any less right exactly. than the way that you would have done it. Is it okay? So the way that I did my math problem, yeah, less efficient. I definitely wouldn't want my team taking four times as long to get to the answer. Right. But sometimes following along those paths can actually be super valuable as well yes. for them to discover some other opportunities along the way. Yeah. So we've got to allow them that opportunity and allow them to improve on those efficiencies over time. But yeah. delegation means really letting someone else own things. And so to your point, like, yeah, we we can't do it all. We're not an island. We need to bring in other help, whether it's a few hours a week, someone that's outsourced as sort of a VA yeah. or someone you're actually bringing on to your staff in a more permanent capacity. You got to take a look at what 
where is your highest value? What yeah. things should you be working on? And then what other things can be outsourced? Exactly. And then one of the things that I find when I start doing that too, is that there's a lot of, I talked about this earlier, the busy work. It's amazing when you start taking a really good look at your list of things to do. Right. And some of those items just don't need to get done. Yeah. They can maybe maybe be put on a, a wish list, future wish list of like right. things you want to do eventually. Yeah. There's no reason why they need to be taken up space right now. Uh, I do respect the task list. Don't get me wrong. I, I love a good task list. I feel like people who keep the to-do list in their head, that is not a good place to keep it. You're going to be less productive because you're distracted, of course, by all of the items that are floating around in your head. Yeah. Um, but especially for business owners, I really recommend getting some sort of project management type program yeah. to manage all the different things that you're navigating so that it's not just a piece of paper that says, like, I love this one, uh, work on business plan. What does that mean? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's too broad. It's too big. And yeah. you're just going to keep pushing that off for another day. But if you break that down into smaller tasks, which a project management software program will allow you to do, and there's great yeah. ones out there. I, I love ClickUp. Um, I know a lot of people use Trello. Uh, that's, you know, a classic one that's been around for a while. Yeah. I've heard really good things about motion, which is a bit mm -hmm. AI based as well. So it'll move things around for you. Like mm -hmm. find what works for you. Right. But, and there's a lot of custom mm -hmm. systems as well. And especially if you're in like a specialty type of industry, there might be a specific program that works well for you, but a having a program that allows you to be able to take those big projects and break them down into smaller bite-sized chunks that all yeah. lead you towards that goal. First of all, allows you to feel like you're accomplishing something along the way yeah. because you're getting something done that is moving you closer to your goal. Yeah. And it's part of the bigger picture, but you're celebrating those milestones along the way of like, I actually got some things done. I achieved this goal. Yeah. So, and then when you have those things too, it's a lot easier to be able to delegate to others as well, because you're really clear on what you should be doing. Right. And you're looking at these other tasks of like, oh, this doesn't make sense for me to do. Right. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So the number one tip that I would say when it comes to productivity though, and this one's pretty huge and I've kind of alluded to this a little bit already, but just to be super, super clear about it is to identify every day. I do this myself personally. I tell my team, do the same thing. Identify yeah. your top three things for the day. Mm -hmm. So what are the, if I get nothing else done today. So I kind of talked about, you know, putting those types of tasks at the at the top of your day or your most productive hours. Yes. But really being super clear about what those top three things are and creating yourself a visual reminder. Yeah. That is the key to being able to do it. This visual reminder can be as simple as a post-it note stuck to your computer. Yes. Or it can be in like, for me in my ClickUp system, they have a feature called lineup where I can put my top tasks there. Yeah. So you keep going back to it. So when you get off track of like, well, what do I need to get done today? Oh, I haven't got any of these items on my top three things done. Let's start ignoring all the other small tasks because I identify these are the three most important things to get done. Yeah. You do that a few times successfully. The empowering feeling that comes with just knowing you've accomplished something. Yeah. It will energize you. So if you are starting to feel like you're a little bit burnt out, it's because you're not getting those things done that you know you want to be getting done yeah that you know you should be getting done and right. you start resenting the daily tasks that you're doing so right. having those top three items and some days you know what you're going to spend more time working in the business and maybe you just don't have that top three list that looks the same as those days where you're working on the business yeah but having that top those top three tasks every day yeah that really really helps to pull you back when you start getting a little bit distracted because you will get distracted. We all do. <laughs> we all do. I think those are great tips. Oh my God. You know, I, 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 I was always, always a victim of that for the longest period of time. It was, I was trying to do everything, but a lot of the things that I was doing weren't, weren't really necessary. They should have been on that wish list that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And then I had to, like, I was talking to my business coach and I was, you know, we were, we were talking, it's like, you know, what's your main goal? And I'm like, well, I want to grow my business. So every time you have a task, you know, look at the task, he would say, and is that going to help you grow your business? Or is it going to, is it something that you need to get done, but it doesn't really have to get done right now? Or it's something that would, you know, it, it, it would help a little bit, but it's not really that important. You know, you can kind of mm -hmm. push it aside. And I'm like, you know, so every time after doing that for a while, it became natural. I'm like, so every time I, I had, I would create in the morning, I have like a, I bought, I bought a notebook. 
And so, and then I would, every day I'd be like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I'd write down the main things that were really important for me to do right. to grow my business. And I would focus on those. And then if I got those done and I still had time and I didn't feel burned out, mm -hmm. I would accomplish the other things if I felt they were necessary, if I think they were going to help grow my business. Everything else was like pushed to the side, I, you know, and, and, you know, it, it, it wasn't really necessary. Yeah. I'd like to do that, but it's not going to help me and to accomplish right. my goals. And that was like a, a big icebreaker. I think for me, it was just, absolutely. you know, I love that. Yeah. And I think, um, so one of the things that some people will do, and I, I love this idea as well is setting aside one day, say every month or one day a quarter where you can tackle some of those items that are on the wish list yeah. that you don't, you don't find that they really fit in on a day-to-day -day basis, but you can give yourself permission to just spend kind of like a freestyle day working on right. some of those items, which I really love. Uh, but I do something similar where, uh, and I, I, this is one thing I coach with my clients all the time too, is you've got to identify what matters. So in your case, it was growing your business. Um, you know, maybe, and what does growing your business look like? Is it about getting more followers? Is it about increasing revenues? Whatever that looks like, are your tasks taking you closer to that? So right. for me, and you can have a couple of things that matter. It doesn't have to be like just this one overloading thing. But for me, I tend to look at, is this going to bring in revenue mm -hmm. and, and, or does this bring me joy Yeah, and kind of weighing those out. And if it's set, if the answer is no to both of those, it doesn't necessarily mean that the task doesn't get done, but again, it goes back to, should this task even be on my list? Right. Like, am I the best person for this? Yeah. Because again, we're going to overload ourselves with things that we don't necessarily need to be doing. So yeah. what can you offload to somebody else? Yeah. So I want to talk about what I call my task triage method. Mm -hmm. So little story, and I can't remember if we've talked about this on the show or not, but a few months ago, um, I discovered that my car was vandalized, woke up one morning and I have a convertible mini Cooper convertible, uh, shout out to all mini Cooper owners out there. We're a whole community. We're very special <laughs> people. Just saying, um, I love my mini. So anyway, so I got a mini Cooper convertible and someone had, uh, burned a hole and slashed the side of my soft top. Oh my God. Yeah. Pretty massive. And so I had a super productive day planned and now I'm spending hours dealing with the police, dealing with the insurance company taking my car to the auto body shop, did all these different things. And yeah. that wasn't what I had planned to do that day. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, when I would tell this story to people, I said, you know, realistically my, that week should have been completely derailed. Like, yeah, I got, I should have gotten nothing done that week. When you figure all the different things that I was navigating and like disruptive phone calls in the middle of the day, having to deal with insurance, just, you know, drop everything and yeah. stop and do it. But here's the thing. Uh, there's this uh, theory called Parkinson's law. And basically what Parkinson's law says is that we will expand time to whatever capacity we give it, essentially. I'm paraphrasing, yeah. of course, here, but uh, Parkinson's law says that like, if you give something, if you give a, a meeting an hour, you're going to spend an hour in that meeting. Do you know how many hours or how many meetings I cut short? We're done what we need to do and the meeting now. There's right. no reason to, to meet longer than necessary. Exactly. But so many people get caught up and like, oh, we said we're going to meet for an hour. We're going to meet for an hour. You can get yeah. that stuff done in 30 minutes, get it done in 30 minutes. Exactly. So what I challenge people to do is start thinking about, is there, can you reduce the amount of time that you are allotting to certain tasks? What would yes. happen if you did that? Mm -hmm. So with this triage task, this task triage method, what I did when my car was vandalized was I had to take a look at, all right, I thought I had 20 hours to complete these things for this week. And now I've essentially got three hours. Yeah. If you had to kind of like, like think about doing a fire drill, right? Yeah. You know, like, or your, your, your boat's sinking. What are the three items you're going to take when that boat's sinking? Like, what are you, what are you going to get out of the building? What are you going to do with that? Exactly. So if you absolutely had to get just a couple of items done, what would those items be? Right. And so that's, that's that triage method. What ended up happening that week was not only did I have one of the most productive weeks I've ever had, I had one of the highest revenue weeks I've ever had because mm. I was so laser focused on the tasks that were going to be the most lucrative for me, the most yes. productive for me mm -hmm. and everything else was pushed off to the side. Yes. So we think we're too busy to handle anything else. Right. But the reality is that that time does exist mm -hmm. if we're scrutinizing things just a little bit closer. Exactly. So if you had to think about 
if you've only got a couple of hours, not 10 hours in your day, how are you going to spend it? Mm -hmm. Is it the invoices that need to get out because you don't get paid if invoices don't get out? Exactly. Is it client calls that you need to make? Is it uh, creating that new marketing campaign? Right. Uh, you know, what does it look like? And there isn't a right answer that like everyone should be doing. Everyone's going to yes. have something different based on their own business. Right. And this is something like, this is great to have each member of your team practice the same exercise as well of just like, if you can't do anything else, what would you do? Exactly. And again, it kind of goes back to those most productive hours and putting things at the top of the, the day. But let's say that you do end up having to deal with an emergency all of a sudden that's taking you yeah. out of the office for three or four hours. And now you're like, oh, I don't have the time to do the things that I wanted to do. So take a moment, slow down for a second, stop for a moment and just evaluate what absolutely has to get done. What's exactly. really going to move the needle and ignore everything else. And I know ignore sounds like... Oh, so easy. Just ignore it. It's got to go somewhere at the end of the day. Like, you know, you can, you can roll those things uphill. They're going to roll back down at some point. Yeah. So, you know, they've got to go somewhere, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be that day. And again, if you can get some of that momentum going and get rid of some of the minutia, yeah. you will find your, your, your mental space, your ability for decision-making your health, your physical and mental health yeah. will just be in such a better place. Do a hundred percent. Yeah. And I know I'm not, I'm making it sound super easy. And at no point do I think that it is, trust me, I practice this on a regular basis. And there are days where I'm looking at this list of 40 things. I'm like, they all need to get done today. There's yeah. no way 40 things are getting done, of course, but I'm like, how do I do this? But again, yeah. taking, you know, being really discerning about it and really kind of picking things apart. It's amazing what you can do. Yeah. And I like how you talked about making your meetings short and concise. There's so many times that I've had like meetings that were scheduled to be short, you know, they, they was just, they were just, you know, um, just uh, uh, talks about certain things and, and, and then a close, and then you get on sometimes to these conversations and they last so long. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've learned over time to be more brief, blunt and concise. And when I do that, it, it, the, I usually have more success in my business. Absolutely. You know, the outcome is always more positive and it, and it's the outcome I'm looking for where I think sometimes if we, we brought in these, these meetings and we, we get off track and we don't stay on that white line, we kind of lose the person also. And then the, the whole mm -hmm. goal of what we want to get done is, is, is kind of lost. And so, and so is your time you know, absolutely. So it's really, and once it's lost, you're not getting it back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's amazing what you can get done in like a 10 minute call. So one of the things that I encourage people to do is stop setting up meetings with every member on your team to discuss every little thing. Again, yeah. a project management system allows you to communicate about a specific task within that system, keeps the whole conversation together, has a record of it. Yes. A lot of these, you can send audio notes if that's easier for you or little screen share clips, if that's easier yes. for you. But that way it's on your time frame as opposed to theirs. I am mm -hmm. huge on sending screen share videos or audio notes as yes. means of communication because like it that. means that like you're not having the conversation in quote unquote real time, mm -hmm. but you're having it on your schedule and on their schedule. So no one's disrupting anybody. Yeah. A 10 minute call on your calendar means that you're going to for 20 minutes before him, like, Oh, I got that call coming up. Right. I better not forget about that call. Oh shoot. I got that call coming up, you know? So yeah. it, it's distracting. Um, but you can keep, if you really need to meet with your team members, instead of setting up 30 minute calls, 45 minute calls, hour calls, set up 10 minute calls, set up yes. eight minute calls, set up 13 minute calls, whatever it looks like to you. Right. Uh, if you feel like, Oh, but my staff, you know, like, I don't want to feel like I'm just brushing them off. So I want to ask them how their weekend was, how was their day? Da da da. Sure. I get all of that. Maybe you set up one-on-ones with them, which I do strongly recommend. I mean, employee management is a whole other conversation, of course, yeah. but set up one-on-ones with them that you have maybe once a week or once every other week so that you're having those times where you're really connecting. Right. But if they just have a question about a specific task, book it for 10 minutes. Yeah. There's no reason why it should take more than 10 minutes to explain how to do something and have them move on and get them unstuck. But again, if you didn't, don't even have to meet with them, if they can send you their questions in a screen share where they're like, I'm here, and this isn't making sense. And I kind of feel like this should be this. And then you can respond back to it. Great. There are other times where you need to play off of each other's ideas to kind yes. of hammer something out. I get yeah. that. So in that case, yeah, maybe you have a 10 minute meeting, but um, 
I'm trying to think of what organization it was that I was listening to. I can't remember if it was a podcast or a book. I want to say it was one of the books that I read. If I'm not mistaken, it might've been drive, but I don't want to be quoted on that. Anyway, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's already recorded in the podcast. It's fine. But yeah. uh, there was a, there was a book that talked about uh, one organization that I believe they do it every quarter. Mm-hmm. They wipe their calendars. Oh, so every meeting that was on their calendar gets wiped off. And that allows them to determine whether or not it needs to go back onto the calendar. I like that. Because it can be like, oh, I'm having a marketing meeting with my team every Tuesday. And then I'm having a staff meeting every Wednesday. And then every Monday morning, we have a check-in meeting. Like all these meetings start to add up after a while. And then you start feeling like you're spending your entire day in meetings and then you're not actually getting anything done. Right. So they wipe their calendar every now and then. Like, I mean, that's, I, I can imagine a few people that experience some anxiety with that. I would be one of them, I'll admit. <laughs> um, but I have worked really hard to reduce the number of meetings that I have with my team. Yeah. Because you get to the point where you're having a meeting. So this is what I would encourage everyone to do. Take a look at the meetings on your calendar. And are you having a meeting for the sake of having a meeting? Right. Yes. It's absolutely wonderful. If you're working with a remote team, you need to have those check-ins. You need to have those connections. I get all of that. There are ways to build that yeah. without having to have all those meetings. Right. Right. It can be as simple as an internal communication system. Like, uh, like we use Slack, there's Microsoft teams, there's all sorts of different in- internal communication channels. Yeah. And you can have like a little shout out channel in there that just says like, Hey, so-and-so did this awesome thing. Or I, I had a chat with so-and-so today and like, just, you know, keep the conversation going or share photos of your cats or whatever. <laughs> anyways, again, I could do a whole other session just on employee management and not to say that I'm perfect at it. You can ask my team, they will tell you I'm not perfect at it, <laughs> but I figured a few things out over the years, but, uh, but yeah, I think just, you know, taking a, just really scrutinizing how you're spending your time every day. I think we yeah. all owe it to ourselves to dedicate some time. And th- this might take a little bit of just sitting down. Maybe you go for a walk, maybe you, you know, find a park bench somewhere to sit on and just kind of evaluate things outside of your office, you know, where yeah. you've got a little bit more brain capacity and, uh, you know, free up some of that space in your head to be able to process things a little bit better, but evaluating where you should be spending your time, what's been getting your attention that maybe you you're, you feel shouldn't be getting the same amount of space it's getting. Yeah. And then even just taking a look at the things that you're saying yes to. Exactly. And just really setting up some boundaries for that yeah. so that you can be in a better position to be able to achieve your goals. Saying no to someone doesn't have to sound terrible right. or selfish, you know, yeah. um, but it's, it's important to set your boundaries and just, you know, if someone says like, Hey, can we, can you help me out with this? Can we hop on a call this week? Maybe you're saying mm-hmm. to them, I can't do that right now. Can we hop on a call in a few weeks? If not, could you give me a bit of a better outline as to what it is you'd like to discuss? And perhaps I can do a quick little voice note to you. Right. There is nothing, by the way, that I find more frustrating than someone saying, hey, can we have a call and giving zero context as to why we're having that call? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've gotten lots <laughs> of those too. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. And I'll admit, I've done it to people at times. I'm like, this is too hard to explain in email. Can we hop on a call? But I try to at least give a context of yeah. what it's surrounding, like an exactly. overall overarching theme, like, you know, and, and also if you are going to do that to someone, give them an amount of time. Like, I feel like this shouldn't take more than 10 to 15 minutes to discuss. Right. Being clear on that as opposed to just this open ended, like we have a call and an hour later, your day is gone. Yeah. Right. I like that <laughs> a lot. I like that yeah. a lot. Cause I, I think, I think sometimes things get, you know, especially with me, I think sometimes things get taken out a little too longer than they should and condensing those, those, you know, those 10 minute calls, you know, and you know, mm-hmm. they, those 15 minute calls that turn out to be an hour long when they should be no more than 15, you know? Right. So really keeping, keeping focused, I think too, in your head, keeping focused and say, this is a 10 minute call and just, you know, think about like what it's about what is, you know, what's the purpose, you know, and then getting the result, you know, and then once you achieve those things, I think then, you know, okay, time to politely, you know, close the call. Yeah. (laughs) And don't get me wrong. Like there's, you know, there, there's an argument to be made for the value of having some of those extended calls. I mean, Stacey, just as an example, you and I could talk for hours. We know this, you know, so (laughs) every time we record a podcast episode, I got to bank for having at least an extra 30 minutes that you and I are just going to end up like going down the rabbit hole and chatting. There's value to that though. They're always such enlightening conversations. So leave yourself space for those where you know that you need it, where you know that you want it. Don't get me wrong. It's not to say that everyone's got to be on a quick time limit. Exactly. Yes. You know, but, but setting some boundaries up and just being realistic and especially on a super, super busy week, 
uh, be mindful of how many of those calls you're going to have, because if everyone's taking energy from you, you don't have any energy left for yourself. And we need to ensure that we are feeding our own, our own souls and our, our own energies first. Right. So yeah. making sure that we're not depleting ourselves. Yeah. I think that's an amazing point. Yeah. hundred percent. Now, if you had to like take away and, and give like three productive, like takeaways of things you'd like to emphasize, what would you like to tell the audience? Prioritize. I think that's the biggest thing of just really taking a a real discerning look at your to-do list and prioritize the most important things and evaluating them based on what matters, based on what's urgent, based on your most productive time of the day, when are you going to work on those things mm -hmm. um, and being really stringent, I think on all of that, but I think just even developing that awareness to take a, a more objective look at the things that you're doing. Yeah. I think we don't do that often enough. And again, I'm guilty of it as well. Yeah. Where when I start taking an objective look at things, it's amazing how many items can be cleared off the list yeah. of things to do and allow you to prioritize the things that will bring you joy. Because the goal of this as well is not just to move your business forward and to be able to do more things in a day, but to allow you to enjoy life in general and yeah. have time for family and friends and those things that are most important to you. So I think 100%. just really, just really evaluating and prioritizing all those things. I love yeah. that. I love that. And can you tell everybody all the different services you have? Could you have a lot of services and, and some of the yeah. things that you provide for people? Yeah. So I do business coaching is predominantly the main thing that I do. I do also do some on-demand uh, training as well. So the best way to find out about me is to go to about You can see all the different things that I do there from my speaking to my business coaching. I offer both one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I also have a fantastic 12 month program called the real women, real business mastery program that focuses on 12 pillars of success that incorporates on-demand learning in addition to live support, group calls, a live community. It's a really, really comprehensive program. So that's been the main thing that uh, a lot of my clients are really finding. They're getting a lot of value out of that. Uh, but if you also want to check out my podcast, you can also find it there as well. Uh, so yeah, so those are probably the main things I would say is definitely the, the business coaching and the podcast. So this has given me a great opportunity to be able to uh, get introduce some people to my messaging. Um, but the Real Women Real Business podcast is available on all platforms now. I love it. I'm so excited for uh, you. Yeah, Thank you. Me too. And, and again, I, I appreciate all the support that you've given to help me to grow my audience as well. Oh, uh, you're very welcome. Oh my God, this yeah. has been awesome. I love having you on the show. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you and you have say, so much valuable uh, information. I think, I think you really, you know, you just have a, a pillar of information to, to share and it, it's, and it's so valuable. It's not just, you know, just throwing out stuff, everything that you said, you know, we could apply to our lives and even people who are not entrepreneurs, you could take a lot of that stuff, even as oh, a yeah. mom and you could apply that to your life as well, you know, because I would say, especially as a mom, <laughs> yeah, especially that. as a mom. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, they yeah. really are the, the true superheroes. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's a whole lot of juggling. That that's they're a doing lot every of juggling. Day. Yeah. yeah and sure. so it's like, you know, these are really valuable things that you had, had mentioned during the podcast. So thank you so much. This has been amazing. And this is something that I think we all struggle with, but you gave some really great advice. And I, I thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you again for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I'll see you soon. Take care. You too.